Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 15th April 2017. I am Sagan Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company registered in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. However, if you would like to know more, you can visit the About menu on our website and learn more about myself, the company, and more importantly, how Superior Profit Way can help into your own trading. Okay, I go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we'll look at key technical analysis of oil, gold, India Nifty index, and few forex symbols. Then we'll go to look into SPY, QQ, and DIA through Q charts before going into broad market sector and industry analysis through graphs and heat map and ranking table. We'll look at some of the ideas shared in traders community since our last class. And we'll be happy to analyze any potential trade ideas shared by any of you. In miscellaneous, we may look into Delta Airlines, a trade that was not shared, but I saw there was a great gap day trade opportunity, very profitable trade opportunity. We'll discuss that. And Q&A, as you know, is throughout the session. You can use the Q&A panel to ask me question at any time. Okay, let's now start with a few of the commodities. Let's look at oil and I will change that chart on the right hand side to advanced hop on template the last trade opportunity that we discussed in oil is when price came down to the support memory and around this time we had thought about taking a long trade it was discussed in one of the weekly market roundup and that trade worked well and price went up now i see that it came very near to the resistance memory and it stopped. This is already overextended. We can see the stretch signals on top of the candles. So we'll not be looking for any long opportunity right now. The people who went long at the bottom may still be holding some position using stop loss that can be decided from the Q protection signal. Uh, we don't have any short opportunity yet. If it hits the memory resistance and tilts down with relatively high activity, then it may give a Q bounce short trade signal. Right now at the right edge, there is no trade signal. We see in weekly also, it came to the resistance memory. So if it tilts down, it will give a potential short trade signal. Let's look at gold. For gold, around this point, we had thought of taking a short trade. And in the community, I had followed up, sharing a post on this day, right at the very beginning, that as price came to the cyan ascending direction line, we may book profit or make sure that the trade doesn't turn into loss. This was shared in the community. and. That was a good decision because gold went up eventually. Right now, gold is also stretched to the upper side, as we can see from the stretch signal on top of the candle. So we will not be taking any long position right now. If it comes down and tilts up, then it may give a low risk, go with flow long opportunity. The weekly backdrop color is already cyan, so it will support the go with flow trade opportunity at that time. Let's now move to India market. We'll use Metastock for that. 
this is nifty because it is the broad market index for india so we don't need the relative performance for nifty in the last few weekly roundup we had discussed that even if the cyan candle came in this daily hop on template the reward risk ratio would not be very good at that point and uh, we were not going to take a long position instead we discussed that if price went up and came down with some kind of bearish signal then that may be a short opportunity and we see that on this candle a bearish headwind actually appeared and since then price has not been able to go above the high watermark level so if somebody was holding a long position from way back around 2016 end of the year some of the position may still be held if we switch to hop off template then we can see if the stop loss was ever triggered or not and let me do that if we had taken a long position at this point using a bounce trade signal bounce or box long trade signal then as price went up we will be moving the stop along this q protection line and we can see that we will get stopped out at this candle this magenta flow candle if you look at the videos posted in the tutorial section in the youtube channel or on our video page under education menu you will see that there is another way of placing stop loss for long term investing not just following the q protection signal in itself but also moving the stop loss only when a higher low is formed in an uptrend if that approach is followed then our initial stop loss will be at this point when entering the trade and then we will wait for a low to form so if we think that this is a small low local low forming then the stop will be moved to this position then this is another local low forming and after that only stop will be moved to this position subsequently to this position this position this position this position and the position is still being held this is this approach of placing stop loss is more suitable for longer term investing for swing trading which are trades which are entered at swing trading but we would like to carry forward a partial position to let profit run for those cases it may be more appropriate to just follow along with the q protection signal and keep moving the stop upward so both these approaches are possible one is to follow the q protection signal as it is and another is to use q protection signal to move stop once a low is formed the first approach is suitable for swing trading and carrying partial position to let profit run and the second position may be more applicable for long term investing so in either case if somebody is holding partial position then uh, it is time probably to tighten the stop or book more profit of the remaining position if we look at the weekly chart of nifty then we can see that when we thought about taking a long position at the end of december 2016 there was a bullish headwind signal also now price has gone above the high watermark level price is extended on the higher side if it comes below this high watermark level then it will constitute a fake upside breakout and that may give a bearish signal if on the daily chart nifty is already too low by that time instead of trading nifty as a short there may be other stocks in the indian market stocks or futures or options using which bearish trades may be taken let's look at some of the forex symbols let's look at sing dollar in one of the last weekly market round up when price was around this point for sing dollar versus us dollar we mentioned that price is moving sideways in a narrow range along this white 
very slow direction line and we said that we will not be taking any position at this point instead our preferred option was for price to go up probably hit this memory resistance and till down or possibly price tilting down from this yellow slow direction line declining direction line yellow or white also provides resistance and it happened in that way as we anticipated it exactly hit the yellow slow direction line on these two candles and price tilted down from there so if a trader forex trader was keeping an eye on this daily chart then they would be able to take very profitable trade entry on both of these days this is again another example of where we identify a trade using the daily chart but the actual trade entry will be done using real-time chart Q fine-tune template let's look at Australian dollar for Australian dollar we could successfully decide a short trade along this position then book profit along the way when this magenta candle came it provided a go with flow short opportunity came to the watermark level watermark level and very close to the lower boundary in any case much more than the risk distance was covered and profit will be booked and then price went up now at the right edge it is exactly at the memory resistance so if it goes down from here on Monday then it may give a short opportunity if it goes up at this point we are not going to take any long trade because our stop will be far away at somewhere at this point instead the alert forex traders uh, who were watching Australian dollar they might have noticed that price came to the watermark low level and then went up with a bull release signal that gave a box long trade setup and using that forex trader could have entered long on this day itself using fine tune template or entered the trade on next day near open again using fine tune template could there be any swing box trade using this bull release signal i wouldn't enter a swing trade swing trade using this box signal because the resistance memory was nearby and the stop will be below the recent low so looking at resistance memory i will not be entering a long trade in australian dollar at close of this day however uh, it is fine to take day trades using real-time template because there the stop loss will be much narrower using five minute bars let's look at euro usd for euro usd we had earlier thought of taking a shot using the headwind signal it was discussed earlier and that trade worked well at this point it hit the memory resistance several days and it couldn't go down so again an alert day trader forex day trader could use this daily chart q hop on template and see that price was hitting a pre-existing memory support line could take day trades on one of these days or maybe all of these days on the cyan candle that is a bullish flow candle when the bull release signal also came it showed that uh, euro usd has likelihood of going up however in uh, in this trade there was no clear bounce trade opportunity because one of the bounce trade opportunities requirement is very high or extreme high activity in forex charts i discussed earlier that it the volume information is not reliable therefore to get very high or extreme high activity may be unlikely for that reason using the using the bounce or box setup in forex symbols uh, is little bit more difficult uh, i suggest using these setups only if somebody is tracking the forex symbol regularly 
and thereby they tend to have a feeling where the price is not able to go down anymore in this case and then they could use the box and bound setups ignoring the requirement of high activity let's now move to us market we'll use trade station for that in the last weekly webinar we had discussed that if price came back up after hitting lower boundary and tilted down then it may give a magenta candle bearish flow color and that will be a go with flow short opportunity that signal came on this day and if any short was taken if it was taken at that time then profit target will be the support memory and that profit target was hit if partial position is still being held then we will continue to hold that at the right edge price has broken below the support memory it is already overstretched on the downside so we will not be taking any short trade right now in superior profit way we like to take short trade only when in a downtrend lower high lower low price first goes up and tilts down we like to take short trade on the first magenta color that is the optimum place where the stop loss distance is low and the profit target is at least as much as the risk taken in the trade so this anticipation of price going up and tilting down to give a short opportunity worked well again let's look at dow jones industrial average for dow jones we had discussed the same idea because price was already in downtrend when price was near lower boundary we were waiting for it to go up and tilt down the magenta flow candle came little bit later by that time price was already at support memory so we will not be taking any short on this candle but an alert day trader could be able to use this particular day to take a gap short day trade there is no swing trade opportunity right now at the right edge price is overextended to the lower side as shown by the magenta stretch signal so we will wait for price to probably go down come back up and till down again giving a go with flow short opportunity at that time and from the chart we can see that if that happens at that time there will not be any support memory nearby the next support memory is far away so we will be more happy to take the short opportunity when the next magenta flow candle color comes near value area this is a common scenario when a stock was moving in an uptrend for long time there will be ascending memory lines support memory lines along the way when the stock starts to till down but after some time all these support memories will be gone and the remaining support memories the nearby memories will be gone the further ones will be reasonable distance away and in that case we will not have a situation like in this case where we had a flow candle but a support memory is nearby we can see that the next flow candle color when it comes around this location there will not be any support memory nearby and we will be happy to take a short trade if that happens book quickly partial position at lower boundary and then hold the remaining position with trailing stop expecting price to come to either the ascending white very slow direction line or the ascending support memory line and that will also be a clear cut conversion from an uptrend that was going on for a long time to a downtrend without any support memory nearby let's look at qqq it was the strongest among the three all of them had displayed the bearish headwind QQQ is the only one which could go above the high watermark level created by this bearish headwind. At this point, we had discussed that if price went down, this is the same point where SPY and DIA were about to show go with flow short opportunity. And we discussed that if price went down from this level and give a bearish signal like bear release in this case it will give a very low risk box short trade opportunity again that anticipated trade worked very well 
the short opportunity came on this red candle and we will be booking at least partial profit at support memory and the remaining position may still be held. There was no go flow short opportunity in this case. It is already overextended on the lower side. We can see from the stretch signal. So we will not be taking any trade here. There is no standard Q trade setup at the right edge. Let's now move on to broad market sector and industry analysis. I have already created the charts for that. So let me open that. We look at the broad market sector and industry analysis broad market in terms of looking at NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index both using weekly chart and three pairs of market internals. That's the new high low total number of stocks making new highs minus those making new lows advanced decline total number of stocks going up minus those going down up down volume volume of all the stocks going up minus volume of all the stocks going down looking at these internals can give us additional information because this is weekly chart and we are looking at market internals it is meant for use for long term investing not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading if we look at higher high higher low both the composite indices are still in uptrend of course this is in weekly chart by the time this will show lower high lower low the stocks in daily chart would have gone down a lot and that is why i mentioned that this is to be used more for long term investing not for swing trading or day trading the internals continue to be weak. They could never reach the highs that were achieved earlier when the price was going up. Those highs were highs in the internals were never touched again. So the internals continue to be weak. In this particular week, we see that all the six internals declined. Magenta color means that they are below zero they are negative and declined green means they decline but still above zero so five internals are negative and all the six internals declined so we say for this week that just passed the internals are clearly bearish though in weekly chart the indices still continue to be bullish let's now look at sector information every week we look at the 10 major sectors using three periods, three review periods, five days, the red color bar, last five days, blue, blue, blue bar is for five days prior to the red bar, and green bar is 10 days prior to the blue bar. Together, these three periods constitute 20 trading days or about one month. This is the second successive week we see where majority of sectors ended, ended in negative. Earlier, we were seeing that one week they were positive, one week they were negative, showing the flip-flop, but in this week that changed a bit. This is the second successive week where most of the sectors you can see ended in negative with the red bar coming to the left side. Only two sectors ended in positive, telecom, slightly positive, and non-cyclical consumer goods and services. Both are defensive sectors. And basic materials had the biggest negative performance. It was the weakest. And we will see that this is reflected in several metal mining industry as well. This is last week sector performance. And here, as I mentioned, we see the majority of the sectors were also negative let's continue to industry analysis last week we saw that renewable energy was among the top performers and this week we see that it has become the top performer of the 10 best performing industries so last week also we discussed that one could look for long opportunities in renewable energy equipment which was a lagging industry for a very long time. And if you had done that, probably you could have caught some 
long trading opportunity in one or another stock in this industry group. Gold mining continues to do better as gold also went up from the memory support as we discussed earlier. And in this week, looking for pattern, we see five of the top 10 best performing industries are in red. Industrial and office rate, real estate industrial investment trust, mortgage rate, diversified rate and retail rate. So you may look for long opportunities in red group for the upcoming week. That is how we like to combine technical analysis with sector and industry analysis. If we are looking for swing long position, we don't only use Q chart for technical analysis, but also try to find a stock where the industry is strong for long opportunity and try to find a stock in an in a weak industry for short opportunity. By the way, this is the uh, this is the graph from previous week. And as I mentioned, renewable energy was already among top 10. However, it was not the best performing. This week we saw it has become the best performing industry group. If we see this week's five worst performing industries, then we see that worst performing industries declined a lot more than the gain of the best performing industries. Aluminium went down by 6.8%, coal by 6.3%, industrial metal mining by 6%. These are huge percentage drops. If for a few seconds I go back, you see the best performing industries for this week. The top performing one is renewable energy equipment, which went up by only 3.3%. Next one is 1.9%. Whereas the declining ones, went down, but much higher percentage. Showing that the market was bearish in this week. Coal had a big flip flop. It was the top performer last week, and now it has become the second worst performer, dropping by 6.3 percentage. Now four of the 10 worst performing industries are related to metal and mining. This is the same pattern that we saw in sector analysis where basic materials drop by the biggest percentage. Their industrial metal and mining, non-ferrous metal, iron steel, and aluminum. So if we are looking for swing trade short, you may look up for opportunities in these industry groups. And also for day trades, you could look for opportunities in these weak industry groups. Banks has come in the list of the five list of the 10 worst performing industries. And I also checked over last one month period, if we calculate banks is actually the worst performer, not one off, but actually the worst performer. In last one month, banks declined by 9.2% and investment services was a close second, declining by 8.7%. Sometimes the week by week changes may show flip flops for a more stable trend, we may switch to the monthly percentage changes or monthly rank changes, then decide on a more stable trend and take trade in those industries. If we did that, probably we would be shorting some of the banks in this last one month period. In last one month, again, banks is the worst performing industry group. We also look at the industries with biggest rank improvement and one interesting thing we see here that this week auto part and automobile related to industry groups have come in this list, whereas these were showing weakness last week. So some amount of flip flop is visible in this week also, not as much as in last several weeks. Last week also we discussed that flip flop was less compared to earlier weeks. And this week also we see some flip flop, but the degree of flip-flop among sectors and industries is less than earlier weeks. Here, auto parts shows the flip-flop turning from weak to strong. And we saw coal also showed flip-flop turning from strong to weak. 
if we look at the industries with biggest declines then we see again coal had the biggest switch from one of the strongest one now it became the worst ranked decliner coal's rank was around 40 something now it became almost uh, 160 we track 160 industry groups so it became very close to the worst performing one if we look for pattern, then we see five of the rank declines came in energy sector. Yeah. Oil, equipment, services, distribution, pipelines, gas distribution, oil, equipment, services, exploration, and production. So again, if we are looking for short swing trade or day trade opportunity, we may look into these industries. And if we are holding long position in these industry groups, then of course, we'll be cautious either book profit or tighten our stop. Let's now look at the industry and sector rank and ranking and heat map tables that is posted on our site every week. We can access it from the home menu. As we saw from the graphs also, non-cyclical and telecom are the strongest sectors this week over the last five days period. And we saw these two are the only sectors that were positive. All the others were negative and basic materials, which had a big switch from positive to negative has now become the worst ranking sector. As you know, in this ranking and heat map table, we rank the 10 sectors across eight time periods from last five days, last 10 days, all the way up to last six months. Rank them from one to 10, one being the strongest, 10 being the worst, and then apply a heat map, cyan for the strongest, magenta for the weakest, and a color gradient in between. This gives us a ranking and heat map table where we can just have a glance at it and decide which sectors are strong, which are weak, and also which ones were strong earlier but turning weak, and which ones were weak earlier turning strong. So we can see consumer non-cyclical was very weak earlier, and then it had a steady rank improvement turning into the top ranking sector in last five days period. So if we are watching regularly, then we will be taking long position along the way in some of the stocks in this sector. The analysis that we do for the sectors, we do it at a much detail level for the 160 industry group. And again, as we saw from the graphs, renewable energy equipment, which was lagging for many review periods. One of the worst performer, 159 out of 160 industry groups to 152. But over last 10 day and five day period, it has jumped ranking significantly becoming the top performer. So this could be, could be an an industry group where we could look for not only swing long trade, but also potentially long-term investment. In superior profit way, how we try to look for long-term investment is in a step-by-step -step approach. We first locate an industry group that was weak for a long time. That is underperforming the market. And it is well known that industry rotation happens in the market, some industries go out of favor and then they come back in favor. So we look for that in a visual way, look for the industry group to be weak for a long time magenta and then starting to turn cyan and take a long position. The exact entry position is decided using Q technical analysis. So this is such an industry group and we, if we look for similar other industry group, we could see that mining. Mining is a, a broader group. We could see that it was weak earlier. Now it is turning strong. This may be because of some of the precious metals, silver or gold mining. Uh, we can look for potential bottom catching long opportunities in this industry group as well. We can see the similar pattern playing out 
in food retailer and wholesalers. As I mentioned, sometimes the last five day and last 10 days data may show flip flop for a more stable trend. We can look at the monthly data. And if we do that, we can see that food retailers and wholesalers had a big rank improvement on a monthly basis from 106 to 15. So we may look for swing long as well as long term buy opportunities in this industry group. Now, if we apply the same monthly analysis to renewable energy, then we see that it is still weak, very weak, 152. So we may start looking for long opportunities on based on this five day and 10 day ranking, but be aware of the fact that on a monthly basis, it is still one of the worst ranking industry groups. That doesn't mean we cannot take a long opportunity. If we have a low risk, narrow stop loss opportunity, we can always take a trade, book some profit quickly, and see if it continues to go in uptrend, which will convert the one month rank also to a better one with cyan color. If we are looking for short trade, then we try to look for industry groups which were strong for a long time, cyan, and then turning red now, magenta. So we can see cash distribution is one of them, which had a very big rank drop from 34 to 108 over the last five day period. So if we are holding long position in gas distribution industries, we will be cautious. We can also see computer hardware, which was ranking one for three review periods, declined little bit, declined further, and now over the last two review periods, five days and 10 days, it has declined even more. So if we are watching along this way, we'll be certainly booking profit in existing computer hardware stocks that we are holding and also look for short opportunities. So you may look at this chart at, at these ranking tables in more detail and look for industry groups where you would like to go long and short. And if you want to sort it by the monthly data, you can always click here, download it as an Excel and do your own slicing and dicing. So we covered few commodities, global indices, forex symbols, US market in terms of QQQ, SPY, DIA, broad market sector industry analysis using graphs and heat map ranking table. Now we will go to our community and see what are the trade ideas that were shared since our last class. There is a, a, a comment added to a post on a, on a company in India, Bank of Baroda. I followed up on this. I think the trade was originally posted by Binoy. Let's have a look at that. Yes, on March 15, Binoy had shared this trade and it was a very nicely analyzed trade. In the weekly chart at that time, price had come down and then went up where the backdrop candle color turned cyan, bullish on the weekly chart. And in the daily chart, price had made a higher high, came down and then went up with a cyan color candle, that is flow candle color cyan. Also at the same time, it broke the yellow direction line and the white direction line, the slow and very slow direction lines closed above both of them. So that would be a a valuable and very profitable, potentially very profitable long trade at that time. We wouldn't know how much profitable it would be, but the chart looked very good. And I want to again discuss the point of strong uptrend and not so strong uptrend. In a very strong uptrend, a stock will remain between upper boundary and the value area. That is the middle point of the two boundary lines. But sometimes the stock may come to the lower boundary or near to the lower boundary. That doesn't mean that the stock is not in downtrend. The finally, uh, sorry, no, doesn't mean the stock is not in uptrend. Finally, the uptrend is decided by higher high and higher low. So following that approach, we will say that at the right age, when Binoy initially posted it, 
it is still an uptrend, maybe not a very strong uptrend, but it is in an uptrend. And at the very right edge, the candle shape was very bullish. So that would be a valid long opportunity. And if somebody was tracking the chart regularly, looking at the bull release signal the day before, one may be ready and take the long position right near the bottom of the last candle. They wouldn't wait for the last day's candle to close using fine tune template. They could enter the trade using early range breakout mechanism. So this was the trade idea that was shared by Binoy at that point. And let's see how it played out. Uh, I marked up the chart uh, as of this Friday. And this is the point when Binoy originally shared the trade idea where the stock went up, came down, came to the white direction line and the yellow direction line close to its strong bullish candle. And if a long was taken at that point, our profit target will be the upper boundary line and that boundary line was hit on 29th March. So that was a very profitable trade, swing trade. The stop loss would have been just below this memory support line that was never hit. Along the way, price came down to value area tilted up again with a bullish cyan color candle, flow candle color cyan. So if somebody was keeping an eye on the stock, they could have entered long on this candle, but not at the close of the day using real time data, fine tune template, they could have entered near the beginning of the candle. That is the advantage of people tracking a few stocks, not trying to find opportunities among thousands of stocks, they can anticipate a move and then use the real time trade, real time chart to enter a trade at a much better price. Much better price meaning with a narrower stop loss and a bigger profit margin. Why I said that at the close of the candle, I might not be taking the long position because the potential profit target will be too close relative to the stop distance, which will be below the support memory. I personally like to track a few number of stocks regularly and that's why I'm able to enter the trade at an opportune moment, better reward risk ratio using fine tune template. I think Binoy does the same, several other Q traders do the same. And I do know some traders who use the Q system but may, may try to find stocks among thousands of stocks in Singapore, USA, Australia market. And sometimes they, they ask me how much time do you spend? And I say, I need to spend only maybe 15 minutes or 30 minutes a day. They say, no, why I'm needing so much time. And they, they explain that they are running Q sonars on 2000 stocks, even in Singapore market. And most of those stocks are penny stocks and they have no liquidity at all. Not, not applicable, not, not suitable instrument for swing trading. So we need to put some initial effort to find the liquid stocks in the exchanges that we trade and track only those. And then sometimes we may look at a trade idea suggested by some other trader or look at the news and try to find trading opportunities. But for regularly scanning, it is suggested, at least I suggest that, that create a list of say 100 or 150 stocks and run sonar on that regularly. And these are to be the liquid stocks in the markets that you trade. So Binoy is a very effective trader uh, and this was a good trade shared by him. Not many traders like to share their trades. So I always thank Binoy for sharing his trades. I do share my trades happily though. <laughs> you know that. Okay, let's continue. US still. Sometimes I forget to follow up on some of the trades. So when I notice, then I come back and follow up on the trade. Whether they make profit or loss, uh, I mark up the charts and share them back with you. So this was a trade that was shared. Okay, when was it shared? On March 28th. That was when I shared it first time. It was on US Steel. And the trade was at that time, it, it had a bullish headwind signal. Bullish headwind signal and also bull release. And price was coming to watermark low and going up. So it was a headwind signal and it was also a kind of bound signal, except that there was no 
very high activity. So all the requirements of bound signals were not met, but all the requirements of headwind long signal was met. What are the requirements again? We have a very unambiguous checklist. The requirement is that a bullish headwind signal should appear in the daily chart hop on template. The reward risk ratio should be uh, acceptable, which is uh, true at that time I thought. The entry price will be at the close of the yellow candle. The target price will be along this resistance memory and stop will be just below the recent low. So it was acceptable to my eyes and I decided to share it. On the weekly backdrop template, the only requirement is either the candle color, backdrop color has to be cyan bullish or the shape of the candle has to be bullish. In this case, the shape was very clearly bullish. So I decided to share it and let's see how the trade played out. This is a snapshot as of Friday. This was the long entry point. And at that point, I decided the exit will be along these memory resistance lines. Stop was just below the recent low and then price went up, slightly meandering and then hit the memory resistance. So profit would be booked at this point. Later on price dropped right after hitting the memory resistance. So this again shows the effectiveness of memory resistance. And that is why uh, we like to book profit along those lines. Swing trades, I keep on mentioning it, has a welcome period. So if we had a profit target at the memory resistance, we must book profit when the memory resistance is hit and not let profit erode. We have pre-planned entry, exit, stop loss, and we follow that. And following that, again, this trade worked out very well. Headwind signal is, by the way, another very powerful signal in superior profit Q charts. There is a question from Son. How to find most liquid suitable stocks? Actually, in Q system, we have a sonar. Let me move to the Q system. Give me one minute. By the way, the Q Elite for trade station is also available now. Uh, it is. It can be downloaded. The functionalities available on Q Elite for trade station and Q Global for Meta Stock are similar. But as you know, Metastock can be used for trading in global market. So those of us who are investing in, I am for example, investing and trading in three markets, Singapore, India, and US. So for them, uh, uh, we have to use Metastock and I use Icon that is Zenith heavily for looking at some fundamental data. But for people who are trading only in US market, they may use Q Elite for trade station. In either case, uh, we have a number of sonars. Uh, I am looking at the station platform now. And one of those is stocks with high liquidity. So you may run that uh, on all stocks in your exchanges and it will filter out some of the stocks with high liquidity. How much is the liquidity? By default, the parameter is set to 500,000 shares per day traded average, average 500 share 500,000 shares traded per day. So you may last just run this sonar on all the stocks in an exchange and find out the liquid stocks. Yes, yes, there, there, there is another comment from Son that can we find stocks with highest beta? Yes, you can do that also. Uh, find stocks with highest beta, they will be more volatile and more suitable for swing trading. However, they should also be liquid enough at least 500,000 shares. That is my suggested guideline. So you can always find stocks with high beta and then liquid stocks. For some markets, for exchanges, release a list of high beta stocks. For example, India, National Stock Exchange, they have a, a list of high beta stocks. And other exchanges, you can easily find out either using ICON or other web-based resources, you can find out a list of high beta stocks and find the liquid ones among them, make a watch list and run Sonar on them daily. On Metastock also, if we go to Explorer, there should be one somewhere in the Explorer. Optimal price liquid stocks. You can run this Sonar to find out the liquid stocks in your market. Okay, let's continue with our analysis of the trades that were shared in the community. 
So this was uh, US still worked well. Now I shared two trade ideas, uh, I think on Friday, let's come back to them later. Let's look at the trades ideas that were shared earlier. Okay, last week I, um, just after our weekly market roundup was over, I opened an email and I saw one email uh, from one Australian trader who attends our classes regularly and I'm always thankful to people who <laughs> attend this market roundup regularly. Okay, I look at AKS, there, there is a suggestion from Son. At the end of today's session, we look at the stock AKS. But let's look at this uh, mail that I received from the Australian trader, name is hidden. Uh, we don't publish any detail unless the trader wants to share. By the way, instead of writing to me directly, I strongly, strongly encourage to share the idea into the graduates club. That is why the graduates club were sent was set up and this gentleman is part of the graduates club if you share the trade idea there or question there then others can also benefit so in any case for this particular example i decided to share it without disclosing the name of the trader of course and let's look at the chart uh, this is a, a stock um, some mining company it's a mining company and uh, I don't know if you can see it clearly. Uh, he, he sent multiple charts. But the key thing to notice is at that point, there was a memory resistance and price broke out of that with a very long bullish candle with heavy activity. So in general terms, if we are looking up the media channels, people will say, wow, this company is very bullish. VMC and I, I keep an eye on the channels and I actually saw some so-called expert was suggesting to take a long position. However, in superior profit way, we have very clear guideline. One of them is we manage risk first. We manage profit, but we manage risk first. So if we want to manage risk first, that means we want to decide our stop loss first and potential profit target for reward. Here, price was already overextended. Price was at upper boundary, very close to upper boundary. And the stop loss will be near the recent low. So our profit target will be very small. Potential profit target. Thinking of upper boundary as the usual target and stop loss will be very high. So the reward risk ratio was not acceptable to me at least. So I suggested uh, in a mail to him that at least in superior profit way, there is no standard trade setup. We are not a breakout trader. Sometimes we do take breakout trade when the range is narrow. So if price was moving in a very narrow range and then we see going up, going down and then going up, maybe with high activity, and if we still have a very narrow stop loss, we may take a long trade in those breakout situations. But if the stop loss is not narrow, we don't like to take a breakout trade. So in this case, the stop loss was much higher compared to the profit target. So what I emailed to him, I mentioned that there is no Q standard swing trade at the right edge. As I keep mentioning, we are usually not trading breakouts at those have wider stop and less profit potential. And that was a very good decision again. Because after I shared the input, price indeed came down. So now I think that if price tilts up and gives a cyan candle, that is flow, bullish color candle, then we'll have a very low risk go with flow trend following long opportunity. And that is the point uh, I would like to take the trade. Okay, let's continue. SOXX. SOXX is the semiconductor index and I shared the trade idea some time ago. Let's see when, April 10. April 10, I shared the trade idea. And if you look at this chart, can you tell, do you see any trade opportunity on this chart? It should just pop up to us, right? Can you type your answer in the Q&A panel? 
it is actually go through short opportunity we have this unambiguous checklist and the checklist will conditions will be immediately met price was coming down with lower high lower low price hit at value area with a bearish flow candle the optimal entry point and uh, the reward uh, and the relative performance was tilting down profit target will be along this yellow slow direction line or lower boundary which is uh, good reward compared to the risk the stop loss will be just above the recent high and the requirement on weekly candle is just the backdrop candle color has to be bearish that is magenta those requirements were met by the way the day when i shared this short idea i also looked at media and some people were suggesting people to go long why they were suggesting to go long because their analysis was it was going up for a long time now it came down little bit and they were expecting it to go up that is not the right way in my view the fact that it was going up earlier for many months has not that much impact for swing trader on average our swing trades exit for five days within five days period and here each candle is five day period so we need it to move down only for few days to book profit and looking at the uptrend for so long period in weekly chart is not of that much importance for swing trader that's why if you see our unambiguous checklist our requirement on weekly chart is only the flow color has to be bearish magenta we are not looking at the overall trend so that is why in this trade the people who looked at the long term trend and decided to take a long position when price came down somewhat made loss there are few charts explaining how one could use fine tune template to get even higher reward risk but we see here just one day after entry price hit the ascending ascending yellow direction line and also the lower boundary very close to lower boundary the lower tail you can see hit so i like to place my profit target order with gtc order so i don't have to track when that price is hit by doing that partial profit or if somebody likes to book full profit that would be exited on the very next day there was a question which one is lower boundary lower boundary is this pair of lines at the top of the candle or the bottom the top one upper boundary is our usual profit target one of the potential profit targets for long position when the stock is going up and when the stock is going down with lower high lower low like in this case our short profit target will be at the lower boundary so this was so excess as i posted and within one day some profit was booked let's look at so excess today okay so our entry was on this magenta candle some profit could be booked very next day when the yellow direction line and also the lower boundary was hit and then it is continuing to go down so as i mentioned we can let profit run and we can now use the q protection signal so for that we can move to the hop off template and we can see if we now follow the q protection signal for swing trading as i mentioned we we can put the stop loss at this point the cyan dot which is actually lower than our entry price so by that we we would have guaranteed a risk free trade again in this case let's continue with the other trade share better okay it's a consumer goods company it's a very nice setup uh, I, th i think i shared it in the weekly market roundup also uh, in the weekly chart when i shared it it had dropped and then went up with a cyan backdrop and also a bull release in the daily it, it came down then started going up and at the right edge it had a very strong bullish candle in terms of shape activity was not very high but only high now this is not strictly speaking a go with flow setup because there is no higher high high low but if you remember this chart pattern you will see that this works quite well as well when the price goes down and then doesn't go down anymore instead gradually starts to go up 
and then gives a flow candle color uh, it it may give a potential long opportunity and the thing that we always look for is the stop loss narrow as was in this case so i shared this trade idea to go long and let's see how it played out again our profit target will be at the declining yellow line or at the upper boundary level and the top in two days the top of the candle hit that price and our profit will be booked so we had already booked profit in this trade we can look up the chart also let's look at better better here we can see it had hit the upper boundary and the descending yellow direction line then it came down little bit but it is still near value area uh, if it goes up on monday and gives a cyan candle color we will not like to take a trade at that point because the memory resistance line is there so our long opportunity was on this candle on this candle or it will come if price break out of the memory comes down and then tilts up giving us a go with flow long opportunity at this point let's go back to the community there was another interesting uh, example when i shared the chart uh, i shared the three charts dia qqq and spy and in the last class last market roundup i mentioned that one way to identify short opportunities is to look for for day trading for day trading one way to identify short opportunities is to look at three for example in this case three related instruments side by side using q fine tune template the real time chart and see which one is the weakest so when i shared it that was 10:50 am 10th april i mentioned qqq is the weakest among the three etfs remember on daily chart weekly chart qqq was the strongest so we would not be taking swing short trade on qqq rather we will be looking for swing short trade on spy and dia especially go with flow qqq gave us a swing box short trade also but for go with flow we will not look for qqq because it was the strongest but that is different from what is happening in intraday chart so on this day 10th april on intraday chart using fine tune template this is what i observe this is dia where dia opened then early range high early range low was formed price broke out of early range high price also went to last day's high and went up strongly from there for spy price opened at this point the blue line which was very close to last day's close which was same as dia the opening price blue line was very close to previous day's close same with spy then early range low early range high was formed price broke out of early range high price went to last day's high and went up at the right edge it tilted down but still above last day's high same was true for dia it slightly tilted down less than spy but was above last day's high for qqq it opened close to last day's close early range low early range high was formed but price couldn't go up much higher it tried to go up came back down and at the right edge it is very close to the early range high whereas for spy there was still significant distance for dia also there was significant distance to early range high so qqq i concluded was the weakest and if i was going to short any of them for day trading qqq would be the choice let's see how that short day trade played out this is a fine tune template five minute chart but i put the stop loss signal q protection on on the chart to see when i shared the trade price was around this point so our stop loss using q protection will be using the sand dot lines at this point entry will be somewhere here so this will be our risk distance and in day trading as soon as the risk distance is covered we start booking profit another way we start booking profit is when significant 
pivot line are hit. So in either way, we'll be booking profit in this red candle. And at the right edge of the chart, we'll be putting stop loss. There are two ways of putting stop loss for day trading. Either put stop loss using trailing stop, which will be at this cyan dot, which is far below our entry price. So it will be a risk-free trade if we use that stop. Another approach is to exit say half position and put stop at break even stop. That will also make the trade risk-free, guaranteed to have some profit. The third approach as I discuss often is to exit two third of the position and leave one third at original, uh, original stop. By that we have a long leeway before the trade is stopped out. And even if it stopped out, we still have some profit. If we use this trailing stop, close trailing stop, we are most likely to get stopped out. Even the break even stop is more likely to get stopped out, but the original stop is less likely, very less likely, relatively speaking, to get stopped out. So that is sometimes my preferred approach, especially if the market is high or the stock is high and I'm ex expecting it to go down over next few days. I may initiate a day trade in this manner and hold partial position, maybe only one third uh, over next day also, overnight position, uh, making sure it's, it's going to be almost a guaranteed risk-free trade because it is QQQ, DIA, SPY, ETFs, very locate, the chance of gap up, gap down is less. So it is fine sometimes to exit two third and hold one third of position for next day. So anyway, as a day trade, this was very profitable day trade based on the idea that I shared. Now that was which day, let's see. That was 10th April. And now if we look at QQQ, so this was the day this was the day, uh, this day the trade was shared. This was the day the trade was shared. This is a 10 minute chart. This was the day the trade was shared. Uh, what I wanted to show here that if we had used trailing stop using Q protection, we will be stopped out as the stock went up. If we had used break even stop, that was also stopped out. But if we had used original stop, then it will not get stopped out. Of course, if we keep remaining position at original, we should exit higher quantity when our profit target is hit. That is why I mentioned we could exit two third of the position at profit target and leave only one third at the original stop. And if we did that, if we were bearish on QQQ overall, then we will be very high profit next day. And if we scroll forward, We see, uh, let's look at this. Next day, the next day, after we book partial profit, next day again, early range high, early range low was formed. Price broke below early range low and never came up. Third day, since we took the trade, again, early range high, low was formed, then price came down. Let's scroll forward to see what happened. price never came back up. Only coming on this day, early range high was formed, low was formed, and then early range high was broken. So if we are following fine tune template and holding the position, we will be exiting remaining position on this day at 131, around 131. And I want to scroll back now. Remember the number 131, 10th April. And our, our entry price was somewhere here. Somewhere here. Somewhere here. So that was at 132.4. So for a day trade, that's quite a, a sizable distance. And this, I, this example I took to illustrate the different results that you would get depending on where you are putting stop either, either using Q protection after a partial profit is booked or at break even stop at, at or at original stop. Okay, those were the trades that we shared earlier. 
Now, just this Friday, I shared two trade ideas and I'd like to go through them quickly and ask you that do you see a trade opportunity? Let's see. Market was bearish, so this was okay I, I probably gave up the answer already but you all know the charts by now by looking at this chart i asked will you take a short trade on this candle or on this candle or both what do you think this is monster beverage yes both yes both now because we are active trader we would prefer to go short on this candle because every day it goes down more and more. Our profit is reducing, profit target being the same, and the risk is increasing. So our preference is on this day. Why on this day? Because the yellow, yellow direction line is also broken on this day. But we will not be taking a short on this candle, magenta candle, because the yellow line was just below the price close and we will not be using this magenta candle because the direction was not clearly bearish at at that time and also it was sitting right on top of the white direction line but when price came to this magenta candle it was clearly coming down lower high lower low it had broken the yellow direction line so we'll take short if for some reason we missed this is also a valid opportunity so this is what i shared on Friday. This is actually an intraday chart. So I was watching it and I showed it. Let's look at let's look at monster energy at the end of the day. At the end of the day it fell further. So now if we look at it at end of day, uh, we'll say that we will not like to enter the short at end of day. Uh, however, uh, as I said, we are active trader and I always suggest creating a list of 100, 150 stocks. So we are already short on this day. And uh, I think we can expect it to hit lower boundary in next few days. The other trade, interestingly, I, sh I shared, but I would like to show the chart to you first, ALXN. Do you see any trade opportunities here? This was a long opportunity that I shared. Uh, it, it's a pharmaceutical company and uh, this was shared on Friday. I saw that it had a fake downside breakout. It went up and all in weekly chart also, uh, it came up from a support memory. That is all that I wanted to share in today's market roundup. I remember there was a query on a stock AKS Instead of taking time in this class, I will go ahead and post my view on AKS in the Trade Ideas Forum in our community. Thanks to you for joining today's market roundup and I look forward to seeing you again. Have a great day.